Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another video. This is comic book haul number 39, my sixth year on YouTube, six year anniversary. And it also happens to be my birthday. Now the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I got a little something from Patrick that I'm going to open up. Well, sort of already opened up, but when I saw that it said a gift for you, I stopped because Patrick uh, told me ahead of time. So let's start out with that. Very thank you, Patrick, for you know, you know, Patrick always thinks of me, um, you know, thinks of a lot of people uh, in the community on their birthday and other holidays. Christmas, well, not that birthday is a holiday, but on Christmas and stuff like that. So, thank you, Patrick. So, let's see, comes in this gift bag of sorts. So, let's see what it is. I'm feeling it, I have an idea what it might be through feeling it, but. I don't know, but first, let's before we even do that, let's take a look at the card. Haha, <laughs> the Patrick Luther Manning. Uh, you know, due to the current situation in the world, uh, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot on my birthday. Not that we normally do anyway, because you know, uh, you know, whatever. But it is kind of uh, limiting, so we're going to go out in a little bit. But I wanted to make sure I do this video before I uh, go out with my family, me, my wife, and Little Reaper. Let's take a look. Ooh. Okay. What kind of shirt? Okay, so we have a shirt, and I think I... Or, oh, my God. I saw the little tag, and I... I'll show you all in a moment what it is, what kind of shirt it is. Always looking to get new shirts, especially cool ones like this. Just to make sure. Got that. So, Patrick knows, and most of you know too, I would think, that I like um, video games very much. Patrick, I think it was for, I think it was for Christmas a couple years ago, he got me a PlayStation shirt. Well, now I could put this next to it. Awesome Atari shirt. I love the way the logo is. It looks really cool. I'm going to have to start wearing this now in my videos. <laughs> Very cool. Oh my god. Comes with stickers too. <laughs> How about that? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. I love this shirt. And I love the color. I usually, you know, for these videos, you usually see me in about three or four different shirts. I very, very rarely deviate from the Express shirt or... Uh, the Union Jack shirt, or sometimes I'll wear the coffin shirt or something like that. Every now and then you'll see me in something different. I The reason why is because I like to wear shirts that I really, really like that are very, very comfortable. And uh, this shirt and the, uh, the aforementioned shirts are part of that category. And this one right here, even though I haven't tried it on yet, I'm thinking it's going to be uh, very comfortable, but I love the way it looks. This has the look of a very comfortable shirt, and I like the color. It looks gray to me. Am I right? It's gray? I'm, I'm colorblind. I have trouble telling. Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you very much. Really like the shirt. Okay. Now let's show off some books. Okay. Um, this video, you know, nothing too, too crazy. There's a nice, there's a couple nice ones in this video, but nothing too, too crazy. Hopefully we'll have something a little crazy for the next comic book haul at the end of the year. You're probably not going to see that till maybe November or December or, you know, maybe even January. Who knows? But for right now, we have a new comic book haul. Like I said, my sixth year on YouTube. So we have, let me grab the stack of books here. Um, now in this one, it's a very eccentric, and I say X as in letter X, <laughs> uh, eccentric uh, haul, because it's a lot of X-Men or X-Men related books. A lot of them, if not all of them, uh, you know, if, if not all of them, are doubles or triplets of books I already have in my collection. Um, some of these are just upgrades to those books, and some of them I just couldn't pass up because they were at a good price. And, you know, I say, why not? Okay, and let's start off with this one. X Factor 24, the first full appearance of the Archangel. You know, I have a decent copy, another copy of this. But, you know, here's another copy that may be a little bit better than mine. Really, really nice book. I remember a few years ago, along with the next book I'm going to show, 
uh, when the X-Men Apocalypse movie came out, these books, they weren't going for crazy prices, or at least I don't remember them going for crazy prices, but the prices increased, and there was more attention on them, and uh, they went up a little bit more than I wanted to pay for a book like that, or for this book right here, another copy of the first full appearance of Apocalypse, X-Factor X number six. Um, this this copy is probably better than my, my original copy that I got back in 1993. I think my original copy is probably like an 8 or an 8.5. This one's probably like a 9.4. Might even be a 9.6 after a press. Don't know, but at least a 9.4. And, you know, again, like with the last book I showed, I got them for good prices. I didn't have to overpay for these. And I say, why not? You know, if you get them for a good price, why not? And it's the same story for this one right here. For X-Men 244, the first appearance of Jubilee. Oh, and also the M-Squad. <laughs> Another nice high-grade copy. Just like this book right here. Another one. X-Men 221, first appearance of Mr. Sinister. Uh, Mr. Sinister is my favorite X-Villain. I like Magneto a lot, but tell me that Mr. Sinister would not be a good choice to go with the new MCU X-Men line movies. I think both Mr. Sinister and Apocalypse, even though they did Apocalypse in the Fox Studio release several, a few years ago, I would like to see a full-blown Apocalypse storyline in a new X-Men series. You know, yes, of course you're going to have Magneto, but let's change it up a little bit. And to have somebody like Mr. Sinister and Mr. Apocalypse in an MCU-type environment where there are crossovers and there are long storylines that expand several movies, those two characters would be perfect for that. There are other characters that would be perfect for it too, don't get me wrong. But I would love to see a Mr. Sinister. Talk about a secretive, manipulative uh, character that would work wonders in an X-Men MCU environment. Here's another one. I, I forget how many copies of this I have, but this is a 9.4, very nice, great, again, and you know, uh, this edition, uh, new newsstand, don't have a newsstand copy, I don't think. I think most of, I think my other copies, I think I have two or three others that are probably 9s, maybe 8.0s, 8.5s, probably one of each of those I just mentioned. I don't, I don't think I have anything better than a 9.4 or another 9.4. Anyway, here we have a 9-4. Uh, long shot number one, first appearance of long shot. Um, it's also first appearance of Spiral. Uh, Mojo made his first appearance in issue three. Talk about an underrated character. You know, I think I've said that. I think I've showed this book in a previous video, uh, talking about how long shot's underrated. I think he is. You know, again, talking about the MCU and putting the X-Men in the MCU, I would love to see long shot in there. You know, I'd like to see something different. You know, I don't want to see how the X-Men started again for the, you know, X amount of time. I, no pun intended. But I'd like to see something different. Now, I showed this particular copy in another video, but now it's going to make its official haul debut. Here we have another copy. My other copy, I think, is like an 8 or an 8.5, my original copy. But this is Avengers Annual number 10. Not a great cover. Like I, get, like I said, when I showed this in previous videos, I think I talked about how I really don't like this cover that much. But the opportunity arose to improve, upgrade my other copy. I still have that copy, as I have all the other copies, too. I have other copies of Mrs. Sinister. I think I have two other copies of the first appearance of Mrs. Sinister. I still have them. still have my original copy of Apoc, First Full Apocalypse, Archangel. They haven't sold. Usually when it comes to a really, really big book that I want to upgrade, I'll sell off my older copy. But with the books that I'm showing off in this video that are doubles or triples, you know, I, I didn't do it. I just hold on to them because, you know, I don't pay that much for them. But again, I got this for a good price, I think, in the beginning of the year. And I said, hey, I could use a nicer copy. I know when you get to 9698, the price goes a little higher than what I'm willing to pay. But I said, hey, why not? 94, good price. You hear screaming in the background. It's a little reaper again. A um, few more here, a few more. Now, these next two books, now with all the other books I've showed you so far, I've talked about how they're doubles or they're triples, upgrades, whatever, uh, whatever I use. But these next two X-Men books, I've never owned. And they're nice high-grade copies. I think they're maybe between uh, uh, 8.5 and 9.2, depending on which one you're talking about. But here we have uh, Uncanny X-Men, 
number 120, which is the first cameo appearance of Alpha Flight, and 121, which I think is the higher grade of the two, first full appearance of Alpha Flight. Like I said, never roamed these books before, unlike the other books I've showed so far. So it's nice to have something new in the collection. And these were books I've always wanted to get, um, you know, for a couple of years now. And I said, oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. But I always got sidetracked with this one or that one. And I just said, I got these earlier in the year, around the same time I got the Avengers Annual 10, maybe around February, late January, something like that. And I said to myself, I'm going to finally go for it. Then I think a few months later, there's rumors about Alpha Flight in the MCU. Look. There are probably rumors about every character in the MCU. <laughs> so, But regardless of that, I'm happy to finally add that in my collection. Again, going with the upgrade, uh, upgrade trend. Now, remember I said a few moments ago I still have my other copies of the books I just showed. You know, the, the doubles and the triples. Well, these books, these, these, uh, these next two books that I have that I'm going to show... These are also upgrades, but I sold the other copies off some time ago, and I've been looking to get upgrades. And now I got them. Here we have, now we're going to EC, Tales from the Crypt number 27, one of my favorites in the Tales from the Crypt line. Uh, cover story, I believe, is Horror Headed Off, which was in, I think, the season five episode of Tales from the Crypt on HBO with Martin Sheen and Billy Zane. I think that's the cover story. Uh, the story was drawn by Graham Ingalls, but the cover is drawn by Wally Wood. Um, wait, is that correct? No, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm completely wrong on that. Yes, um, there was a story from this book that was in season five, but it's the first story, Well-Cooked Hams. I'm sorry, that's what Martin Sheen and Billy Zane. Horror Headed Off is the, the cover story, but it wasn't featured in uh, HBO. Sorry, I goofed that one up. But here we have a nice 4.0, 4.5 copy. It took a while for me to get find this book. I think another great story in this is Madame Bluebeard. I believe that's in this one, Madame Bluebeard. Sometimes I get that one confused with Indian Burial Mound. I think Indian Burial Mound was... Oh, jeez. It was an earlier one. I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I gotta study my ECs again. So here's the other upgrade. I actually traded my copy. Now, this is a 5.0 copy. My other copy looked like a 5.0. You know, it was just as nice as this, except one thing. My previous copy, top staple at the cover detached. The rest of the book was nice, but I don't like detached uh, covers that much. I tolerate it for some, for, in some cases. It doesn't bother me in some cases, but when it comes to something like this that I know I could do better, it will bother me. So I did do better, and I got this one. And I traded, uh, actually I traded that copy for this copy, and I put a little extra money into this. So it was really good. I did it with a pretty uh, well-known dealer in the, on the East Coast who I've, I've sang praises for in the past. So really nice copy, great cover. Um, you know, when you get to... To later Tales from the Crypt books. All Tales from the Crypt books are kind of pricey. But when you get to the real later ones, except for the 46, which I know is supposedly had a limited amount, not a limited amount, but less amount than others, I think. They're usually more affordable than the earlier ones, and you would expect that with anything. You know, later Amazing Spider-Mans tend to be less money than earlier Amazing Spider-Mans. That's common sense. But this one's a little different because of the cover. Classic zombie cover by Jack Davis. Jack Davis got a lot of great covers. Um, and this is one of the classes. See the worm coming out of his skull and all that. If that bothers you, you could just skip over that part. <laughs> it's just well, too late. <laughs> um, last EC for this video. Great cover. Shock Suspense Stories number 17. Now the reason why I've always wanted this one because of the cover. And this was another, this is called Four-Sided Triangle. That's the name of the, the cover story, and it was also on Tales from the Crypt, I think, season two on HBO. But anyway, aside from the great cover, there was another reason why I really wanted this book in particular, that I jumped on it, because of this. Now, I only showed that to you for a brief second, so you'd have to press pause to really see what the hell that is, or if you could see it at all, but I'll tell you what it is. That, that is a certificate of authenticity saying that this copy was once part of the personal collection of Johnny Craig. There were a lot of books that Johnny Craig had that have been sold over the years 
through eBay and other places. And this is one of them. Even though Johnny Craig didn't draw the cover, Wally Wood did. And I don't think Johnny Craig drew a story in this. The, uh, just having a book that came from his collection. There, Johnny Craig that has drawn so many famous EC covers, controversial covers, and beautiful covers alike. And sometimes they're the same thing, right? The controversial and beautiful, sometimes they are the same thing. Um, just to have something from his collection that was in his home, that was in his hands, even though there's no autograph on it or anything, just knowing that this was part of his collection for X amount of years, I don't know how long. I, I didn't do that much of the research. I, I should ask. I should ask the man who uh, ver verified this. He could probably tell me, and I, I could reach out to him. But just having it in my collection now, something by an artist that I admired, that I loved ever since I got into comics, ever since I started reading horror co those reprints back in 1990, to have one of his books in my collection is a true treat, whether he has any of his artwork on it or not. Last two. Now this next one's another X-Men book, the last, the last X-Men book for this uh, video, and I still have my original copy, but I upgraded, uh, I upgraded my original copy to a 5.0. I jumped on it because the price was so good. X-Men number three, first appearance of the Blob. When I first saw this book for sale, and I'm looking at it, and I, I always wanted to upgrade my copy um, for reasons I'll tell you in another video, but I always wanted to upgrade it, and... When I saw this one, I was like, oh my God, that can't be the price. I'm looking at it, and I mean, is it a purple label? No, it does, it's not purple. It doesn't say restored. It doesn't have anything. I'm like, that price can't be real. It was real. And I jumped on it. And uh, I'm happy I did. Now, um, with my X-Men run, those of you that watch my videos, you know I'm working on three runs right now. Uh, person, like what I call runs. An X-Men run, a Spider-Man run, and Tales from the Crypt run. When it concerns the X-Men run, I'm working hard to get all the copies that I've finished that run, but also making sure that I upgrade any books that are below a 4.0. My, my, my X-Men number one is a 3.0. Eventually that will be upgraded in time. But aside from that one, all of the books that in, in that particular run that I'm working on are 4.0 or better, with an average book being a 5.5. There's a few 4.0s, a couple 4.5s, but a decent amount of 5.5s, 6s, 5.0s, and maybe a 7 here and there. So that's what I'm going for when it comes to my run. It's not just I want to get X-Men 1 through whatever issue that's in my run. I also want to get a certain grade in them. So uh, that's that. So I was glad I was finally able to get a 5.0 when... You know, and, the, and when it comes to X-Men, I have to have at least a 4.0 or better. Last book, uh, Want List 2020. I was finally able to get this book. This book has been on uh, other uh, Want Lists. I think it was on 2019. It might have even been on 2018. I don't remember. But it has been on another, at least one other Want List that I just never got around to getting. I was really gunning for this book back in 2018. Speaking of Patrick... Uh, Patrick and Mike, when we went to Charlotte, I was, before we went, I said to Mike that I really wanted to get this book, but then I changed my mind and I decided to get Dr. Doom, first appearance of Dr. Doom, which was a good idea. So this one was sort of put off. So maybe this was on 2018, I don't remember, but regardless, um, it's been two years in the making trying to get this book and I finally got it. Amazing Spider-Man number two. This is a 3.5, maybe a 4.0 copy. I'm thinking it's a 3.5 copy. Um, yeah, finally able to add this to my collection. I think it's a gorgeous 3.5 copy. Very happy to have added it to my collection. Like I said, it was a long time in the making. And it goes way beyond, way before rather, 2018 with my discussions with Patrick and Mike. I wanted to get this in 1996. In 1996, I was able to get a couple um, Spider-Man books that I've always wanted ever since I started collecting a few years earlier, um, which included numbers uh, 3, 4, 9, 20, some of them very low grade that have been upgraded since or still need to be upgraded. But there were other books that I wanted to get in that Amazing Spider-Man run in 1996 that just fell through which included a number uh, six, 
I later got number six many years later, but also included in that was number two. I almost was I almost got a number two around the time I got a number three. And again, it just fell through. So after so many years of either actively looking for this book or putting it off or putting making a mental note that I'll eventually get it down the line, I was finally able to make it reality. And now it's part of my collection in comic book hall number 39. Well, thank you again, Patrick, for thinking of me for my birthday. I really appreciate it. I, you know, thank you so much. You're going to be seeing a new shirt, finally, <laughs> instead of the Express shirts that I've been wearing, this, the same Express shirt that I've been wearing for, I don't know, how many years, and uh, others. Thank you very much, and thank you all for watching, all of you that have been watching for the last six years that brought me in the community, stuck with me through the good times and the bad times, that always leave a comment. I understand that people watch my channel who don't comment. Thank you too. I appreciate everything that you do when it comes to watching my videos and supporting me as well. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and be safe. Take care everyone.